Thanks, Devrim. So let's start. So let's think of one fine morning, and you are getting informed that your website viewers are experiencing slow response times, and your queries are lagging behind. And you literally have no idea what happened. Was there a re new release of the uh, schema? What changed? Where to begin even the debugging? And you pull up your terminal, and using the PG Statwish tool, you find this happening. I guess you might know now what might the issue be like. Yes, it's a graph of uh, the number of deadlocks versus the time. The deadlocks are increasing. You get a very fair idea on what you need to look or what you need to find in the changes that might be experiencing right now. This is where PG Statwiz helps you. Getting insights very quickly without needing you to debug a lot of things. But who am I? Hi, everyone. I'm Rajiv Hadlalka, an undergraduate student from India, a member of Khadakpur Open Source Society, a society which is student-led at my university, IIT Khadakpur. I'm a new member to the Postgres community. I'm a terminal guy who loves nature and plays squash. So let's start with getting what is PG Statwiz. It's just a minimalist extension and a utility pair. By the end of my talk, I'll try to tell you how minimal the tool is. The tool is useful for time series analysis and visualization of internal statistics Postgres provides. In short, Post, uh, PG Statwiz is your Postgres buddy. But first, let's dive in the world of monitoring and observability in a more general sense, without talking more in the terms of databases. What are the different parts and what goes around? Though the entire flow is not a one-man job, observability is not something one person can individually handle, I guess. But the end results of what uh, the results of observability we get, it literally it for, uh, changes what level of service we can provide to our users. It starts from performing, performing operations. This operation can be as simple as performing a query, simple as a web, uh, use viewer visiting your website, or someone using your tool. Based on these operations, statistics are collected on how the different things have been working. These statistics help to create metrics. A simple way to define a metric would be any arithmetic operation on a particular statistic to create a, some new statistic which means something to you. It might not mean something to me, but it can be very personal to you. Now, either we go to utilize these metrics to create graphs, plot histograms, and then further use these graphs to perform tuning and analysis of the system. The other way around is to create alerting systems. You can create dashboards. You can create alert systems where you get mails, your chats on your Slack, and based on the conditions which you provide to the system. But this part of the observability is not what PG Statwiz focuses at. It's not what we do. We, PG Statwiz just focuses on the part of collecting statistics till generating the plots. Even the analysis has to be done by some person. Of course. But why do we exactly need PG Statwiz? So that we can track the performance of the database and potentially perform the troubleshooting on the system. The tool helps to analyze your system at a simple glance. You don't need to understand a lot of details. You have a simple graph. You define what you need, and you are done with it. And most importantly, you can even give these graphs to a person who does not know a lot about the database, how Postgres stores these statistics internally. You don't need a lot of things, because this might be quite daunting for someone not hacking into the database with so many views with what PG Stat, uh, which, which Postgres provides you with. The design philosophy behind the tool is quite simple. It has to be minimal. Code should be small enough that it, it just does the job it has to do. 
It has to be modular so that even if you had, have to add some different parts, remove parts, or use the parts which you need so that it's quite easy for everyone. And have the keep it simple, stupid, and the Unix philosophies in mind, because this is what we need. In short, it just does what it is meant to do, provide you with insights, help you know your database better. There are two components of this tool. One is the Postgres extension, which creates, which snapshots the statistics of uh, internal statistics of the database, and a Python utility pair or a CLI tool, which takes these statistics collected by the extension and creates visualizations upon them. There is no need to restart the database to get the tool started. If you have been using some tool, you might know that. Uh, most of the tools require you to restart the database or a up instruction to get the tool working. But there is no even shared preload libraries. All the data uh, that is collected is from the statistics which Postgres provides. This gives the tool a plug and play magic, which helps you get this running on any system, how old it might be running on. The first step of installation installing it would be getting hold on the extension. Currently, the extension is provided on the RPM systems using DNF or using the PGXN, the Postgres extension manager, to install it. Or if you are brave enough, just make install it. Once you have the extension on your system and the right directory, you create extension, you use the create extension command on your psql, and you have it on your system. For the Python utility, you just need pip install, and you are done with it. Both these components combined make PG start with. To use the extension, you will need to create the statistic, uh, snapshots. The user which creates these snapshots should either have the super user privilege or the PG monitor privilege. And it's that simple. I select pgstatvis.snapshot, and everything is on the table. The function returns you with a timestamp of when the statistics was collected. So if you are using something such as a cron job to create snapshots, and you want to understand when was a snapshot not taken, you can use these uh, timestamps to understand better. Next is the Python utility pair, a simple uh, CLI that helps you create visualizations on top of the statistics the extension captured. The tool has multiple modules pre-built, and for each of the modules, one or more graphs might be generated. The, the other parameters for the uh, tool are the same as the psql, which you are already familiar with. A simple command, and you get all the visualizations stored on your system in the form of PNGs and you can analyze them. If you don't need all of them, you can even use, a uh, uh, instead of the analyze command, instead of the analyze command, any of the modules, and you can get that particular visualization. But before moving on, what are these statistics which I'm exactly talking about? Postgres collects a number of statistics using the collector, which gets reported as views. Most of these are about the internal activity or the table index information at the block level. We have two types of these views. First is the cumulative statistics, and there are 24 such views, which the statistics collector collects, and it mostly deals with the server activity. PGStat table, PGStat indexes are some of them, which tells you about the table and index information on how they are getting used. The second type is the dynamic statistics, which tells you about the different uh, things which are in progress, such as vacuuming or replication. So this, not, this might not be very much cumulative, because it's something happening right now. Though the, stat though the cumulative statistics are cumulative, but why do we need to store them? They are cumulative. The reason is fairly simple. To, since the cumulative statistics will be gone once you reset the database. And secondly, if you see the value at one point, 
you just see a number. You don't see how the value has been performing over time. You don't have a history of it. Unless you have a history, you can't tell a lot what has been changing, how the value has been changing. That's what is needed to understand the database more better. Understanding how the extension works behind the curtain and why am I calling it modular, why I'm calling it minimal. At the very base, it's just a base schema which is getting used to create visual uh, snapshots upon. There is a simple table which just have one field, the snapshot timestamp. And this uh, timestamp is used as a foreign key for other tables which are used for collecting the different uh, statistics. So assuming you have a table, uh, a, a table for storing the statistics for the wall rights, so that would have one of the uh, fields as the timestamp that would be linked to this. So all of your different tables are connected to this main table, which is the base schema. And next is the modular specifics. What your module requires, what are the statistics you need, and what are the statistics you want to collect. You might need all of the information that a particular view provides you, or you might not need them. It depends upon you. At this time, we currently have eight modules written for different use cases, such as the buffers, locks, weights, wall. For the utility part, you just need to create a simple Python script. Most of the script can be used as a template from what's already written, and the only change with would be on the part of what you want to create. It can be dead simple as uh, just fetching everything. If you can see, I just called the select file, uh, select C uh, query, and fetching the different parts from it. And it can be very diff complex too. This is a script for the uh, weight events on how the different weight events are performing on the database. This, quite, this can be quite time-taking to write, but we are Postgres guys. For creating the visualization, pgstatwiz leverages the capabilities of matplotlib and a very basic configuration on the font size, font family, and the size of the plot which we, are, which we want. If you want, you can even customize this. Combine both of these, and you have a modular utility. Just import the module which you wrote, and it's working in action. So let's play a simple use case and understand how uh, PG Stratwiz could have helped. All of us know about the checkpointer. It's the crazy process that dumps all the raw changes in the wall into the file system. Ideally, this should be the graph of how a, how a checkpointer should be working in ideal, getting a time checkpoint every few intervals, and that's it. But you come to know across slow queries again. What might be wrong? You again pull out, you see this. You have a very good idea on what are the different configurations you might be looking for. It might be either the max wall size, or the checkpoint timeout time. These are the two basic options you have. Found the issue, you change the configuration, reloaded a database, and see, the problem is resolved. A simple issue solved using a simple tool. But what if the visualization you needed isn't provided by the tool itself? Quite sad, but wait, I said it's minimal and it's modular. We can build one for ourselves. I let I let, let you through the path of creating a simple module with the code I wrote for uh, something which is not needed. I had a table, PG Bench accounts, and I wanted to create a, a snap a visualization on how my sequential sequential scan versus index scans. For the table, for the extension, I just had to create the base table, which had the snapshot timestamp on it, and the sequential scan and the index scan, which I wanted to store. 
I created a function which snapshots all of them into the table by querying the all stats, uh, PG stat all, uh, all tables and getting the table name as PG bench accounts. I reloaded my extension with a new version and I'm getting these statistics. To create the visualizations upon it, I just need to fetch the rows from the table and plot them. I again did a magic select query, fetched the sequential scan and the index scan, and made a plot. Most of this is a boilerplate if you see the different modules which have been written. And this is the plot I got. I know now that my table is performing very badly and my index is, is quite bad. I need to perform, I need to create a new index. This helped me. But moving on, before moving on, how did I manage to do all of this while pursuing my college studies? Thanks to the Google Summer of Code program, which provided me the opportunity to connect with you folks all and to the Postgres community by letting me choose this project. Google Summer of Code is an online program focused on bringing contributors all over the world into the open source software development. It was started in 2005 by Google and Postgres has been a part of it since 2006. So 20 years is coming. <laughs> and contributors are paired with mentors from the different open source organizations and help gain exposure to real world software development techniques. I had the same opportunity and I had the great opportunity to have Jimmy, Pablo and Boris as my mentors. Thank you. So there are various opportunities for students in this. We get to work on real world problems and real world open source software, where, which can be quite hard to, for a very beginner to get into. Having a mentor or having someone to guide is really helpful in this. We get to connect to a larger community of the organization and our fellow G-Sockers during the process. Having both communities in hand helps us understand how to do something which we haven't done. During my experience, during my GSOC journey, I had a number of friends. I could create a number of friends through the program, and some of them I even talk to right now. One of them is, uh, would be uh, talking about his uh, project tomorrow. And we also get some monetary incentives that actually help us somehow. It is a great opportunity for organization and mentors too. You get contribution, contributions on your project that helps you too. And you get an opportunity to help students begin their open source journey. But, so like, are talking a bit more on my experience on what I have been doing and what uh, my experience was like. In the start, I had quite a daunting experience. I could not understand where to begin from. After the first meet with my mentors, uh, I was recommended with some books that you, some of you might have written, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> so, I just started out with reading of them, reading them. I guess I read more than uh, 500 blog posts from the different uh, companies you all work at. <laughs> and that, ha that was the real uh, fun I had. I could get a number of things just by reading through the blog post and reading the documentation of Postgres itself. More next to it was working on the project itself. So for creating the project, I needed to understand how Postgres works internally. So slowly I got to understand, I had some talks with my mentors and I got to understand how the different things move in the community itself and whom I could contact to further for more queries. One good answer I received and I remember is, 
just ask on the hacker's mail list. You'll get an answer. I asked. I got no answer. <laughs> so I guess Slack and the internet relay chat was my uh, favorite part where I actually got my answers. So that was another fun part where I, like, by, just by mailing the hacker's mail list, I actually read more than 200 mails again with uh, uh, 50 more threads. Yes, quite daunting, but I got to understand a lot of things from that itself, and I got to uh, understand more on my uh, favorite things on what I want to do. I had the chance on exploring some of the Linux fundamentals through working for uh, in this project. So getting back to the talk to PG Statwiz, and let's understand how some of the ways like PG Statwiz can be extended further to solve the use cases it isn't meant to be. The use your own, met bring your own metric, something just I showed you a moment ago. You snapshot the necessary statistics which are required. You update the extension on the database. You create a module for your metric on the visualization tool. And you get a freshly prepared visualization out of the box. You might even create the live stat monitoring dashboards. The data is located on your database, and you own it. You can create whatever you want. You can even create alerting systems on it. It's very simple. To wrap up, PG Statwiz is a very simple tool that helps you gain insight on your database. It does not evolve any dependency. You don't even need to restart your database. The entire tool is modular. You bring what you want, you use what you, what you want, and you create what you want and it is open to contributions. Thanks for tuning in. Any questions? Any questions, please? Okay, well, <laughs> may, I start for, may I start first? Which beer do you like most? <laughs> because in his bio he said he likes beer, and I wonder, well, what's your favorite beer? <laughs> you can keep the mic in the middle. Um, I guess that the uh, statistics, when they get resetted from the user, system administrator, or whatever, that doesn't have any impact at all in PG StatBits. No, like the statistics still are stored on the database, and you actually get to see what, uh, how the statistics, like if, uh, depends on the use case of how, why the statistics was reset. If, so for example, if the statistics was reset after a config reload, you get to understand, you actually get to understand how the system performs after the uh, configuration has been reloaded. You have the older statistics, and soon after you collect the new statistics, you can create two different visualizations over them. So yes, it does not have any impact. And is there a way of resetting the statistic in PGStatBits itself, or? Yes, you just delete the snapshots. You, there is a function. There is a function to delete snapshots, and you are done with it. If you could go back in time, just before you started Google Summer of Code, what would you tell yourself? Hmm. <laughs> just do Google Summer of Don't, Code. Don't, like, uh, just do it. <laughs> just do it. Uh, I, I'm, I'm relatively new to the PG stat viz. I've looked at it once or twice. I've seen one or two uh, posts on LinkedIn. I've only looked at it briefly. Uh, it looks very nice for a simple tool for quickly gathering key database statistics, much lighter weight than using something like Prometheus and Grafana. Mm -hmm. One feature I would quite like, even in a simple tool, would be deltas. Is that something which might be possible? So, I mean, you have these cumulative counters, which is, which is good. And if you're a hardcore math nerd, I can see the rate of change. But for a lot of the time, I'm trying to persuade someone in a team that some problem is. The change over, like, one of the things in Grafana is you can have the change over the last five minutes, the last ten minutes. Is that a feature you might be able to have in there? 
Uh, something I don't get you. Exactly. So, if you've got cumulative counters, mm -hmm. um, sometimes it can be slightly confusing if the numbers go, I mean, you saw it with the deadlocks. Yeah. I mean, and a, a good mathematical eye can see where the problem is. Uh, but sometimes if you look at the deltas over the last five minutes, it can really highlight that. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's a sort of graphing tool. And it's sort of like, you know, you wouldn't have to change the, it's more the presentation in the math plot. I think there might be a delta function. Um, I, I can maybe, I'll make a note of what it, what it is, and it would be a nice enhancement. But uh, yeah, it looks okay. like a nice tool. Um, okay. Thank you. Any other questions, please? Thank you. So, I assume you spend a lot of time with the PG database. So, how do you think? Is it better to run it manually or use any scheduling like cron or whatever? And what is the minimal or occasion interval between the snapshots? Okay. So, like, if you want to run it manually, uh, I would uh, give a prize to you. <laughs> running it every running it every uh, ten minutes or fifteen minutes for years, you wa you want it, but yeah. So you can have something like different tools such as the different uh, cron tabs, Linux cron tabs, or the PG timetable extension which we have, or the PG cron extension, and you could just add the select PG statwiz dot snapshot uh, query on it, and it will fetch the snapshots for you, and the, like for myself, uh, I have been trying with the trying to find the best time which uh, that could help me with, and I found two minutes to be a very good time that uh, helped me understand the statistics of my database. So, like I have been working with uh, some projects, my personal projects, and I just used this extension on my tool itself, on my database itself, and two minutes was something I found too good. And, and, and yes, if it's like two minutes, uh, do you have any numbers? How is the size of snapshot tables is growing? Like, is it like 10 terabytes per month or, or less? I mean. So like, uh, that depends on how many modules you have added. So, but like, sorry, I could not uh, check the statistics on how my table was growing in terms of size. But uh, I don't believe it should grow uh, by a large amount because there is only one primary index and the rest is just simple text. So it shouldn't grow a lot. It's just a few megabytes per month. I forget it in my cron job, in my laptop, so I know the date and I remember. It's just a few megabytes per month around that one, yeah. So th there was one other thing which you said which made me smile and also piqued my curiosity. So you mentioned that the hackers list was actually quite intimidating to get a response. Uh, that is my experience too. I didn't know that there was, is it a Postgres, uh, there's a Postgres Slack channel? And that was more helpful uh, if you had a general question. Was, was that your experience? Was that, I've not found the Postgres Slack channel before. Uh, sorry, which channel? You said there was, you, you checked on Slack and I saw in the link that there's a Postgres team Slack. Is that what you were using to get? Yeah, like the Postgres, uh, the Postgres channel, like the general channel, basically. Okay, and that Postgres works flag. quite nicely? Yeah, like that works okay. good for me. Thank you. I shall check that out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was a nice talk. Um, a small uh, query, if you want to take um, a snapshot, it's a select query. Uh, if you want to do it outside of the of the database, uh, for example, in a cron, is it in the cron of PSQL that you select, yes. or is it also uh, you have to do it with the Python? No, cron? like uh, for uh, the cron, you just need to automate using the psql command, and uh, in the command itself, add the query of the select. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions? We have time. Okay, so thank you. Thank you.